Connor. Yeah. Over here. Where? Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. How are you, sir? How are you? Good. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, I was asking you on Thursday about his right hand. Yeah. Can I tell you what you told me? I said his right hand would get him into trouble. It's the shot I predicted. I said he'd overload on his right hand. I said I'd slip. I said I'd bang the left hook. Uh, left hook. And that's what happened. Word for word, you said, I felt when we stared down, I felt his right hand was twitching, which was a subtle tell for me. He is ready to unload that right hand, and I feel that could be a downfall for him. If he lets that right hand go, I will not be there. I simply enter the way I enter, and that is enough. They either overextend or they shrink away, but either way, it is not good for them. I will create traps and dead space inside that octagon, and I, I will walk him into that dead space, but all of a sudden, he will be in danger. How do you do that? How I do you mean, predict these? if you can see it here, and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. So I see these shots, I see these sequences, and I don't shy away from them. A lot of times people believe in certain things, but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. If you truly believe in it, if you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will <clears throat> become reality. I knew he would overextend. I mean, that's just the way it is. It's 24 7 in my head. I always think about it. I'm always down. I don't do anything else. I'm, I'm knowing that, knowing that, that I have that kind of mentality about it. That's what gives me confidence going in there. You know, I've already visualized what, what, what's, what's ahead of me here. I've already visualized uh, my hands getting wrapped and what maybe walking out to the wings, walking out to the cage. I visual, I can see everything. I can see. Of course I visualise the belt, man. That belt, that, that belt is on me up 24-7. You know I'm, I'm not, I'm not going in there to shake no one's hand. I'm not going in there to be the token Irish guy. You know what I mean? Wear a paddy hat and a fucking, and a pot of gold. You know what I mean? Carry out a pot of gold and have a ginger beer or something. I mean, you know what I mean? I'm just going out there. And I'm going out there to go at people. I'm not afraid. Trust me. No. What do you think? I'm afraid of me? Man, I would fight that guy in a heartbeat. I would fight any time in a heartbeat. I would go forward and I would go at him. You know what I mean? It's not, it's a fight at the end. It doesn't matter who, there is no opponent. There's no Jose Aldo. Who the f is Jose Aldo? There's no no one. You're against yourself. You know what I mean? You're against yourself. And, uh, and I just feel like I'm able to beat myself. You know what I mean? I can, I can beat my mind. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Uh, I just, I, be, I believe in myself so much that nothing is going to stop me. You know, it wasn't predestined as far as like executive producing a film and having it in, in in cinemas but certainly what was what was what was important to me was leaving a mark I felt like if you're gonna do something in life you must you must leave leave, leave a mark let future generations or, or future uh, family members of yours look back and be able to see uh, where they come from and, and who they are related to I, I, I took uh, line my lineage very very seriously and, and okay. I, 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 uh, I studied about the McGregor clan way back and, and, and I, that gave me motivation to understand that I'm doing the right thing I'm doing what I should be doing I'm, I'm, I'm fighting in the modern era compared to where we were the, my family were fighting on the Scottish Highlands way back defending defending against the English invaders so that, that was something that was important to me always to leave a mark and obviously have film documented. I knew what I was doing was you something different. Doing. I was doing something different. I knew that. And I knew I wanted it to be documented and, and, and see where it goes from there. Did I see this? I, you don't know. I, I don't know. I saw something. I, I had some sort of vision. And thankfully, as I grew uh, older, it, it, it formed uh, uh, before me. For me right now, important is legacy. Leaving, leaving my legacy behind. Leaving a footprint. Letting the world know and the future world know. This is what I done when I was on, on planet Earth. And then, of course, with, with my son, Conor McGregor Jr., the legacy continues. Absolutely. And it keeps going. But what's really nice, though, I suppose, is that we see a vulnerable side to you as well, that you were emotional when you won the featherweight title. Did, I mean, did you want everybody to see that, or did that just happen organically? No, well, well, that was... By, that, that, was that, that, that fight was the most emotional I've ever been, because... It was the, even though I unified the belt, 
that was the interim belt they call it in the game and then a, a couple of months later I unified it against the actual champion Jose Aldo but even when I unified it against Jose Aldo I, I wasn't as emotional as I was from the original one the original one was the first time I strapped UFC gold you have no idea how many t times I've been told I'll never do that or, or never, let alone win the belt even win a fight even get signed I've been told I, I'll, I, I've been told I can't and I won't so many times that when it finally happened and after the camp that I went through to get there I, I, I was emotional as far as like I didn't care about cameras or who was around me at that time it was just it, the, I'm, I'm glad that they were there to capture it was a great moment to capture but I was just letting the emotions take over Connor yeah over here. Where? Right here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, I was asking you on Thursday about his right hand. You said, I felt when we stared down, I felt his right hand was twitching, which was a subtle tell for me. He is ready to unload that right hand, and I feel that could be a downfall for him. If he lets that right hand go, I will not be there. I simply enter the way I enter, and that is enough. They either overextend or they shrink away, but either way, it is not good for them. I will create traps and dead space inside that octagon, and I, I will walk him into that dead space, but all of a sudden, he will be in danger. How do you do that? How I do you mean, connect these? If things? you can see it here, and you have the courage enough to speak it, it will happen. So I see these shots, I see these sequences, and I don't shy away from them. A lot of times people believe in certain things, but they keep to themselves. They don't put it out there. If you truly believe in it, if you become vocal with it, you are creating that law of attraction and it will <clears throat> become reality. I knew he would overextend and I knew I'd catch him. So Mystic Mac strikes again.